I wanted to make this video because I was kind of sick of not having a whole lot of room in my room. So I was like, you know what, I'll go to YouTube and I'll type in small bedroom makeover, small bedroom, how to organize your room, whatever. And then every video is like a massive room and it's like, oh, this is my small room. I'm just like, that's not a small room. <laughs> uh, so this is probably one of the biggest rooms I've ever had in my life, just to give you a reference for the small rooms that I have had. I feel like this is like not a tiny room, but it's certainly not a big room when like I, on the YouTube channels, like it just gets annoying. I'm just like, that's not a small room. I'm not learning anything because you can put that stuff anywhere and you still have a bunch of room. So uh, anyway, I have this desk, which I, my new desk actually came in today and it's gonna be like quite a bit shorter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna be having this just be a bedroom. Since I moved into this apartment, it's been a bedroom slash office. Uh, so I have a smaller desk. It's basically just gonna have my laptop on it because uh, I don't have a home for my laptop. It's often charging on my bed and then maybe at night I'll put it over here just on the floor, which is probably not the best place for a thousand dollar laptop. Um, so I think the main thing that has been tough is just because this desk is so big, it's hard to fit it anywhere except for against this wall. Like I uh, originally had my bedroom over here. This is gonna be like where my desk is gonna go now, but this was my bedroom and I had it set up almost the exact same way. Like my bed was there, my desk was here, and I had, before I, I had a dresser, I had a bookcase and I had it right there. Um, so that's one thing that I learned too, uh, is that maybe it's gonna seem really obvious to you guys, but uh, I didn't have a bookcase for a long time. So I just put stuff on the ground and my room would just look messy all the time. And I was like, you know what? I'll get a bookcase. And I was like, wow, that really helped. And then I got a dresser and I was like, wow, that helped even more because your bedroom just looks a lot less messy when you can put things like I like up here I have more than just clothes so it's like my deodorant cologne uh, vitamins sunglasses and then the rest is pretty much clothes um, except for down here this massive camera and cords mess uh, which I would like to put that in the office so then I can you know kind of free up some space in my closet because I have some clothes over here that are hard to reach like it's it's I don't, I don't know if I can really show you exactly how hard it is for me to reach in here like it's I can't really see what I'm getting a lot of time because it's like so dark um, so I would like to be able to put all of my clothes in the dresser except for maybe the clothes that I'm gonna be hanging up um, and I really don't like this overhead light unless I guess I'm showing what my bedroom looks like because I almost never have it on because of that um, so I'm thinking about getting like some kind of smaller lamp kind of like that I don't know if maybe I'll put this in the office but anyway I just wanted to make this video because like I said Every time I try to find small bedroom uh, makeover, or whatever, it's always a big bedroom. So hopefully anything that I learn, I can pass on to you, along to you guys. And also, uh, real quick, before I even start that, I should just show you the bedroom that I grew up in because that'll give you a reference for what I, my experience with small bedrooms. This is the bedroom that I grew up in until I was about 25, moved out to the apartment that I have now. And this room measures about nine feet by about six feet minus this little cutout. So that's about 50 square feet. I had a twin bed over here and a dresser and the bottom two drawers wouldn't actually open all the way because it hit the bed. And if I wanted to, since my twin bed ended about like right here, I could actually step from my bed out this door. So I am pretty well versed in having small rooms and needing to be efficient with my space. And my current room is about 100 square feet, so it's about double this size. So that my room that I have right now just feels huge. So I get kind of annoyed and frustrated when I was like typing into YouTube, small bedroom, and I, there wasn't one. <laughs> I don't know if this is common knowledge or not, but all the styrofoam is just like sticking to this, like no matter what I do, it just like, it'll come off one side and like I was just trying to scrape it off this side and then it would go around to the other side because it just sticks like crazy. So I'm just going to spray a bunch of water all over this and then it should be less staticky. And the styrofoam should be less likely to stick. Okay, it's flying back down. It's not perfect, okay, but it helps. <laughs> That helped a lot, actually. My camera battery died. 
died the other day when I was shooting the video and it was so late I was like I don't really care enough to keep this video going so I finished just putting the desk together and it's mostly put together the way it's supposed to I do have some extra parts because what I was supposed to do was attach this uh, desk part right here to the hutch and then attach all of that to the legs but what I did was I attached this to the legs and then put this on top and now there's some extra parts so someday if I want to really put it together I can do that but I do like that I actually have like storage up here, which I just didn't have before. And right now I just have this little charging station down here. I don't know how long I'll keep that there because it is really annoying whenever I have to plug in or unplug things. I've only had it there for like a day and I'm already kind of getting annoyed. So I'll figure out some other thing to do. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't move the bed, didn't move the dresser. Because one thing I do like about this setup is since the windows are facing this way, this and this like the the tv they're both like perpendicular to the windows so there's never any glare on any of them which is great and one of my big goals was to have a huge space in here so that i can do yoga uh, in my room because before when i had the office i was just doing yoga in there it was like kara's office slash my yoga room so um yeah i really like how it's turned out so far i do have this one piece of wall art this is a picture that i took at like a local state park um and oh i'm actually able to put this over here now which is just like some from my cross country days my friend's mom made that for us and behind these walls are lattice like there's no um that's the word i'm looking for there's no studs behind the wall. You can't hang up anything over two pounds behind this wall. So it's kind of annoying because it would be great to be able to put shelves up, but but you can't. And I also can't um, put any of these, like I have these hooks for my hoodies and stuff. And if I put them anywhere on this door, well, that, that mostly shuts, but it actually got, it's actually the first I've ever got a shot. But yeah, it'll, it'll just like, won't shut so that's kind of not an option because I saw in a lot of videos of actual small rooms of people having like vertical space which would be great but I can't put anything up on the walls can't put anything up on the door I know that there's like some corner shelves that I saw that look pretty cool that like um, they can stand um, I was thinking about that um, although now I don't have any corners to use um, the only, so basically the only thing that I'm really gonna keep doing is putting up some photographs that I've taken I mostly just want to hang up my own photographs so I can just kind of remind myself like, hey, just get out and shoot. If you don't get out and shoot, you're not gonna get any good photos. Um, so I want to do that and then maybe a couple small plants and then I think my room will be pretty much put together. Also, I just got my new chair in today, so I gotta put that together now. tables they're like one it's like it goes back and forth between like the two sides that's kind of what it feels like a little bit I don't know well it feels like the tiniest bit uneven but I, not really enough for me to care honestly so I like it and it was relatively easy to put together and I'm gonna link my desk and chair in the description if you guys want to check them out um, the desk was definitely harder to put together and the chair also uh, was a little more environmentally friendly with how it was packaged <laughs> One week later. So like I said, I wanted to hang up more of my own photography on my walls. Currently, the only photo that I have up on the wall is printed by Staples. This one is printed by Shutterfly. I had a $25 gift card. So I was like, you know what? I might as well try their services to see how I like them. So we're gonna cut this open and see how everything looks. I am, the only thing that I'm not sure about is like how the color will look. Um, and I guess like the paper quality. So, cause I, I've never bought any big prints from Shutterfly before I bought like little prints like uh, this one right here when I went to, I don't know if you can see it that well because of all the glare, but when I went to Ethiopia, I went to visit my friend's family and uh, that's me visiting them at their house. So uh, with the small print, I liked how that came out. So I was hoping that the bigger prints would come out pretty well. It's wrapped nicely and securely. I like that they have this around it so it can't get damaged. Oh, wow. Actually, wow. It's not even all the way unrolled and I really like how this looks. Oh, this is just so cool to see like my own prints like this big. And, and I'm, trying, I'm trying not to like touch it too much with my, my fingerprints. So, but I do want to uncurl it a little bit. Um, wow. I do kind of, I think like this a little bit better than 
my um, my Staples one just because the Staples one does have like a little bit of like white edging around it. Um, so yeah, this is, if I can get to stay uncurled. You know what, since I can't get these to uncurl, why don't I just hang these up and then I can show you them on my wall. They'll probably be a lot less glare that way too. <laughs> I pulled the blinds down so that I could have a little bit less glare on these photos, uh, but I really like how this came out. I feel like my room looks a lot less like a hotel room and it looks more like a bedroom that somebody lives in. Uh, so this photo is just when I was going to Colorado, I just looked out the airplane and saw the sunrise just looked so beautiful with like the texture of the clouds. I really liked how it was like really blue on the clouds and the sunrise is like very yellow, orange and red and just looked so cool with the sun peeking out on the other side of the wing. I just had to take a photo and then I loved how it looked when I was editing it so I just had to print it out. Uh, and then this one is in Gambela, Ethiopia. This is me visiting my friend Wamquath and his family because he grew up in Gambela every year. He would always ask me like, hey Craig, you want to go back to Ethiopia with me to visit my family? And I would always say no. but. For once, I had enough money and enough free time, and I was like, why not? So I went, uh, and the trees I thought were like really beautiful, and I loved um, the, the kid riding the bike down the path, and then you can see, in person you can see a lot better, especially when there's no glare. <laughs> Uh, there's like rays of sunshine just coming through the trees, and it just looks so cool. So it's, it's just so cool to have memories uh, just printed out huge on my wall. Uh, so if you, I like how Shutterfly came out, I'm not sponsored, but if you want to try out Shutterfly, it's not too expensive. Um, but the only thing that really kind of pains me is just that these are like really big, beautiful photographs, but I, I, I would love to frame them, but I can't because there's a lattice on my walls, like I said, not studs, so I can't hang up anything over two pounds or it's just going to rip out of the wall and I'm going to have to pay the security deposit. Uh, so someday when I get my own house, I would love to be able to uh, frame these and put these up on the wall. But for now, I'll just have to settle for this. I think this looks a lot better. Um, and I forgot if I already mentioned what this is, but um, this is just a photograph of a state park near me called Clark's Reservation. I just went out and just shot this. I probably went a little bit too heavy on the edit, um, but you know, I was still learning and everything, so it's not too bad. But yeah, I, in general, I like how all this came out. And now, part two of this video is going to be me, everything that I have to do to get the last photo that I want. Because I already know exactly what I want it to be, but you guys will have to wait and see exactly what the photo is, because it's going to be a lot of work to get this last photo. Two weeks later. This is my first solo backpacking trip, and I had a lot, and still have a lot to learn about backpacking. Uh, since I shot that last scene, I had to spend about at least two weeks just watching countless YouTube videos about backpackers or what to do, what not to do, what to bring, what not to bring. It was, it was a lot. And honestly, at times, kind of overwhelming. Uh, but I just had to remind myself of the shot that I wanted to take and then that it would all be worth it. So I got a bunch of gear, had to learn how to use it, had to break in my hiking boots. I mapped out as much as I could on Google Earth and all trails. I scoured Reddit, Adirondack hiking forums, about different campsites, different rules and regulations that I had no idea about. Uh, I had to learn how to bear proof and bug proof myself as well as my belongings. And then after all of that preparation, I still had to drive about two hours past my destination to Williston, Vermont to pick up some bear spray and then drive another two hours back. And then I found out that the parking that I had gone to before, because I, I tried to get this shot last year and it was just a complete and utter failure. We were camping, but now we're at Whole Foods. But this time, uh, the parking was significantly further away. So now I had to track an extra, it was like at least half mile. Uh, and it was mostly uphill and had 37 pounds on my back, which if I go, when I go backpacking again, I'm definitely gonna try to lighten my load quite a bit. I'm carrying, with bugs everywhere, <laughs> uh, like 30 or so plus pounds on my back up this hill. Like I said, I had to walk in extra because there's, everyone else had the same idea apparently. And I just realized I haven't told you guys exactly the shot that I want to get, but I kind of don't want to tell you until, <laughs> until you see it. Um, you'll see what I mean, but it's, it's, it's gonna be really, really beautiful. I'm just gonna hold you guys in suspense until then. Until then, I'm gonna catch my breath and keep walking. So then after hiking a little over four miles into the woods with 37 pounds on my back, mostly uphill, I sound like one of those like really old people that are like, back in my day, I had to go uphill both ways to school, barefoot in the snow, but that's pretty much, okay, there was no snow, but that's pretty much what it was like. It was awful, like I sweat so much. Uh, okay, so just going a little bit off topic, I weighed myself before I left and I weighed 167 pounds and I weighed myself when I got back and I weighed 161 pounds 
and I can tell you it was almost all water weight. Right? <laughs> but anyway, I set up my camp, had a really quick dinner, and then I started hiking into the destination for the shot that I wanted to get. So this will be home until I get the shot that I want. Uh, I've got this little vestibule here to put my gear, and then I can just sleep in here without having all my gear in here. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty sweet setup. And uh, the only thing you guys really missed is I crossed a little stream to get here, and I actually soaked my feet so much. Have you ever soaked your feet so much that your feet don't even feel wet anymore? Now you're, you're just so used to wet feet that it just feels like feet. <laughs> so other than soaked feet, uh, the only thing you guys missed is that I'm starving. And uh, this is the dinner that I'm going to have. I just have some cold soaked uh, ramen with some good catch vegan tuna. And I'm just going to eat this and then I'm going to stop holding you guys in, in anticipation and show you guys the shot that I want to get. Good news, I found a walking stick on my walk over here and it. I started to get some b-roll for you guys. Maybe I can play some b-roll for you guys right now while I'm just sort of buying time so you can watch it. Uh, but I started uh, recording a little bit of b-roll to show you guys a little bit of what it was like, but then it got really treacherous and I had to start using my hands to get around too. So I was like, I should, I should put the camera down because I don't want to have to like try to catch myself and have a $3,000 camera set up in my hands. But this is basically the spot where I want to take my shot. I mean, I, there's a little bit more to explore, but like, I just, I came out of the woods here and it just, whew, all right, I just need to show you guys. I mean, I, I don't think that video will do it justice, but like, This is just incredible. Okay, so this is the main spot that I was trying to find. Looks a little bit different. It's definitely a lot more open over here, so you can see everything a little better. I think what I was trying to say earlier was I was speechless. <laughs> uh, so the shot that I wanted to get is basically this, although I would turn it like this. <laughs> and uh, basically I wanted to have an astrophotography shot. So basically the galaxy would be rising somewhere over here and you would actually be able to see it at night because there's no light pollution. And I planned this uh, roughly around the new moon. I think the new moon is actually a day or two from now, but uh, the moon isn't gonna rise until I think like 3 a.m. and I'm probably not gonna be out here at 3 a.m. Uh, but ideally you don't want any clouds. So if these clouds don't go away, I might not get anything, but I could at least get some cool landscape shots while this is, uh, while the sun's setting over there this is still really beautiful even if i don't get this shot like this is still so cool <laughs> Craig here to tell you a story about how I almost gave up on this astrophotography shot. Uh, when I came out here, as you saw, there was a lot of clouds and I was like, there's just no way that I'm going to get a shot tonight. So I went, I hiked all the way back to my camp. Let's see, how many calories did I actually burn today? I, it says right on my Garmin app. Um, I burned 5,412 calories today and I walked 22,657 steps. Um, <laughs> and two, a little over 2,000 of those steps were the steps that I just took to get back to here. Um, and it was really treacherous <laughs> coming back up here. Like, it was kind of stupid for me to come back up here because it was like in the dark and I literally had to like, part of it wasn't like um, trekking or what, what do you call it? Hiking. Uh, it wasn't even hiking. Like, part of it was literally like climbing. I was like pulling myself up on rocks. Uh, <laughs> with my headlamp on um, and I was just blasting Lana Del Rey because you know it's just kind of like bear repellent uh, because when I was at my camp I was looking up like I, I didn't have the rain fly on so I could sort of see like some sparkly stuff and I was like is that stars don't tell me I walked all the way back like a couple miles back to my camp and then there's stars that come out uh, and that's exactly what happened like I set my camera up um, and I took a couple pictures just like through the trees and there was tons of stars and I was like, oh my god, I have to go back now. So I swear I came back even faster in the dark, probably because I knew where I was going and I had the walking stick the whole time. And I, I just like, I know this, this sounds like so cheesy, like, but have you ever heard of like, um, it's like, and like, so usually when I work out, I listen to motivational speeches. I don't know why I'm going on such a weird random tangent right now. Um, but sometimes they talk about like 
your soul being set on fire. I literally, I felt like my soul was set on fire. Like I was just like, I had energy that I didn't know I had. I was so excited. It is, what is it? It's like almost 11 or something like that. Yo, it's almost midnight and I'm wired. I'm awake now because I'm so excited to shoot this Milky Way. Um, right now actually, so that's, you, here, let me, let me turn off the phone light. Or you know what? I'm gonna have to turn this to manual focus so you can properly see it. What you're looking at right now is the Milky Way, like right, right here. You can probably see my really dark finger, but that's that's actually the Milky Way, and it's tons of stars. There's like almost no clouds out. The lake, you can probably see, yeah, like you can see a little bit of like the mountains on the. Maybe I can't even see where my dark hand is. Yeah, yeah. So you can see like kind of the mountains on the right hand side, the left hand side. Um, I think there might be a little bit of clouds down there, and I think there's just like one big cloud over here. Yeah, you can even it even picks it up on here. Um, but wow, I am really excited. I'm actually just going to stop this video, and I'm just going to start shooting more photography shots. Okay, bye. <laughs> You can probably tell how long it's been by how long my hair is now, but I finally got uh, the shot. I got it printed out and I'm going to open it up for the first time in front of you guys. Uh, I got it last time, like I said, printed out, if I can cut this open without looking like too much like a fool. Um, but I got my last one printed out by Shutterfly and this was printed out by a different company called Printique. So we'll see how this looks. Cause I got some sample photos of the the shot of my second family from Ethiopia. I just got a bunch of the, the ones from uh, Shutterfly, Printique, and Nations Photo Lab. So I did basically a little mini review so that you don't, oh, it's un overlapped over here. So, so that you don't have to, if you want to print out things that are sentimental to you, then I would definitely just recommend Printique. I'm struggling way too much for this. <sighs> Okay, so I think I just cut through here. And that should help. Yeah. I do like though that this is flat. Like the Shutterfly one was rolled up like a tube. So this should be a lot nicer that it just comes flat and you don't have to flatten it out. All right, moment. Nope, not moment of truth. Okay, now it's the moment of truth. Wow, look at that. I think I opened it upside down. This video is only getting more embarrassing. Whoa. Oh my God, I love this. Holy. I don't even wanna like touch it with my, sully it with my fingers. <laughs> but this is what it looks like. That was the last photo that you guys saw. Wow, I cannot wait to hang this up. Jeez. I feel like this just, this last photo just like really brings everything together. So I can get this glare off of here, hold on. Okay, now I have glare from over here. <laughs> okay, I guess we're just gonna have to look at this like this, but wow, I just really love how this came out. Uh, and I think this photo is probably always gonna mean more to me because I know all the pain and struggle and effort that went into this. And I don't know if I mentioned, but like you're not actually allowed to camp there. So I didn't actually fall asleep. Like I didn't bring up a sleeping bag or anything like that. So I literally just stayed awake. Like I shot until about 3 a.m. or so. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna save some battery because I wasn't sure if I was gonna shoot a little bit more. And I, then by the time I was that late, I was like, I'm way too tired to, to be able to shoot anything. Uh, so I basically just, after 3 a.m. sort of waited for the sun to come up and I got a couple sunrise pictures and then I was like, I just need to go home. <laughs> so I went back down to my tent and I slept for like maybe an hour and then I was just like, I need to go home in my actual bed where I can get some proper sleep. Uh, so like I said, just a lot of dehydration, chafing, pain. <laughs> so I think it all turned out really well. Um, and 
Now I'm just going to go over the things that I learned as far as setting up your bedroom. Uh, like for one, like I mentioned before, I almost tripped on my tripod, get out of here. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that just like, Putting everything on one side of your room really opens things up. Like if you do want to do yoga, I mean, it depends what you want to use your space for. Uh, but if you have everything kind of clustered together, then it really leaves everything else kind of opened up. Whereas before I had like something against here, something against there. It was like something against every wall. So there's like almost no space in here. Uh, and then also I did try, I did do this kind of purposely where I have my lamp in between these two things. So I'm usually either in my bed or I'm at my desk and I mean, what am I, what, other than yoga, like what, what am I gonna do here? So, uh, so I actually didn't even need another lamp. So, uh, and that kind of rolls into my other thing that I learned, which is like try to make everything as multifunctional as possible. Whereas before I just had a desk, but now I have a desk that actually has like some shelving units. Uh, and I don't have a whole lot under here, but I had the option to do that. Um, and along with hanging up art on the wall, I think putting plants in your room really can like liven things up and just having like sentimental things like this, like this will always remind me of the time that I went to Ethiopia. And this will remind me of like, you know, when I went, ran cross country meets and again, Ethiopia, this is my last track meet in high school. Uh, this is a hundred dollar or a hundred, hundred burr which is equivalent to about $3, uh, $4 on the black market. Not that I would ever use that. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, and the other, the other big thing was just separating my bedroom from my office because that'll just obviously just free up so much space. And it'll also just sort of like free up more space in your head because you're like, this is where I come to relax. That's where I go to work, you know? So if you're able to separate those things, then I would definitely suggest it. Uh, but when I first moved in here, it was not an option because we had another roommate. Uh, I think that's it. I'm gonna check my notes because there's a lot of things that I learned from doing this. Okay, I remember. Uh, the other thing that I think I mentioned earlier is trying to have a closed off containers because depending on what you have, like when I had a bookcase before, it, I had like a bunch of wires and stuff on there. So depending on what you have, it can actually look kind of messy. If you have like books on there, it could actually probably look really nice. But if you kind of had like a cluttered camera mess with a bunch of wires, it's not going to look good. So if you can uh, sort of close it off, like I, like I have a bunch of things in here, but like I had a bunch of this stuff like on a bookshelf, like that's never going to look good. Uh, so a lot of times your room can be really spruced up by just having uh, like one of those containers with drawers or a chest or, you know, a just a dresser like this. And the last really big thing was just trying to have a home for everything. Because when you don't have a home for everything, things kind of just go anywhere and everywhere. And it just gets messy, it feels cluttered, you get frustrated. And I just feel so much better now that I have a bedroom and an office. And now I feel like everything can have uh, its own home because before I didn't have enough space for everything to have its own home. So that can definitely be an issue for someone with a small bedroom, especially one that's smaller than 100 square feet. Uh, so I really feel you on that. Because like when I was growing up, I just didn't have a home for anything. Because as you can imagine, 50 square feet, it's not a whole lot. <laughs> I know I mentioned I also wanted to organize this bottom part and it's no longer cords and camera stuff because that is now in my office and now it's just some clothes and the clothes that were in here are obviously in there and now it's this is just camping stuff which is stuff that i don't need to grab on a daily basis so it's not nearly as annoying uh, and one other thing that i haven't mentioned is just thinking about how you use everything in your room because i was contemplating having my bed switched like i think it was like flipped like 90 degrees have my dresser over here the tv there and i would have my desk over here but then i was thinking about it and i would probably have a glare on the tv and then if i had my dresser over here and then my closet over here, I'd be like crossing the room just to get dressed. So I feel like as far as my room is set up right now, this is probably the most functional setup. Uh, and one thing I didn't really do was put stuff, I mean, I have stuff under my bed already, uh, but I didn't really need to add anything more, but that's definitely something to think about if you have a lot of stuff under your bed. As I was editing, I realized that I forgot to mention something because I had a pink nerve Fetonia plant over here and it was not doing so hot. I think just because of this time of year, I like to have air conditioning on it and it's a tropical plant. So I put it out in the living room where it's definitely a lot more humid this time of year. Uh, but I would like to have a kind of dangly plant over here. I think that would look really nice for low light situations. I have a north facing windows. So all of you plant experts, please let me know in the description if there's any certain plant that I should be looking for.
Thank you. But before you go, big announcement, I just started my first website where you can buy any of these prints and I'm going to be adding to the gallery all the time whenever I get a new photo that I think you guys would like. I'm gonna put it on there and you can buy it in various sizes. So check that out, it's in the description and I hope you guys learned a lot about making over a relatively small bedroom. I hope this was helpful uh, and I will see you guys next time or something or whatever. Okay, bye. <laughs>